Hey friends, welcome back to the House of Plenty Studio Kitchen in downtown Hamilton, Alabama. Well, it's time to start thinking about all of the side dishes we're gonna serve at our Thanksgiving dinners. And this is one of my favorite. It's a family dish from where I grew up in the Midwest. Down here in the South, I call it Yankee dressing because they make dressing different down here in the South. And it's good, but it's just different from the way I grew up. And I'm gonna teach you about um, the dressing that we made at our family table. So we've started with about eight cups of torn bread that you let get stale overnight. You can use French bread, sandwich bread, whatever kind of bread you have. And you just tear it up and put it in a bowl, cover it with a towel, let it get stale for a day or two. If you don't have that kind of time, I didn't have that kind of time today. So I just tore it up and put it on a baking sheet and cook it low for about 30, 40 minutes in the oven until it gets a little brown and crispy like this. And we're just gonna set that aside. Now the ingredients in our dressing are onion, celery, and apples. We're gonna put apples in our dressing. You can leave them out if you don't like that little bit of a sweet bite in your dressing, but we're gonna put some chopped apples. And also we're using some pork sausage. You can do some ground turkey if you'd like, or you could use a spicy sausage if you like things um, hot, but we're using a mild sausage here today. I've got that and some butter. We're gonna go over here to the stove and get the sausage cooking. We'll come back and chop a couple things up. All right, so we've got a few tablespoons of butter. We're gonna to add to our saute pan and that's just to make sure that we have enough fat in the pan so things don't burn. Gonna get that melting. And then we're gonna add our pork sausage. And this is just one pound. We're gonna break it up a little bit with our spoon. All right, well that starts to cook. Let's head back here where we can do some more chopping. I've got some stuff already ready. I've got a couple of white onions that we've diced and I've got a small bunch of celery that we've diced also with the leaves. A lot of that celery flavor is held in the leaves of the plant. So we wanna make sure that we include them in this dish. And then I like to use uh, fresh sage. So I've got a large bunch here of fresh sage. I'm just gonna tear the tender leaves away from the more woody stems and then go through here and just see if there's any bigger stems that made it to my little pile. I'm gonna pinch them out. I love the smell and the flavor of fresh sage. It's a much gentler, milder flavor than the dried rubbed sage that you get in the grocery store. So that's why you can see we're using so much of it instead of like a little teaspoon of rubbed sage because the flavor here is a lot milder. We're gonna set this aside. That's gonna go into our dish a little bit later. Now I've got two apples that I'm going to break down and give a rough chop. You could put water chestnuts in this dressing or dried cranberries if you like a variety of fruit or even apricots. Make it according to your appetite, to your palate. All right, I can hear that our sausage is really browning and popping back there. So I'm gonna take a break from chopping these apples. Let's get the onions and the celery in the pan. We're gonna allow this to cook with the sausage and the butter, all the juices <clears throat> and flavor that the sausage is gonna give off is gonna really flavor the dish. All right, now we got a few more things to cut up. All right, we're gonna finish chopping this apple and you can use more apples if you like. And next we're gonna do our garlic. I've got four cloves of garlic here. If you like less garlic, you certainly can add a little less. If you like more, Put in 10 or 12. You should measure garlic with your heart. All right, we've got our garlic chopped up. We're gonna put this in with the apples because that's gonna get added at the same time. We're just waiting for the onions and celery to get a little bit translucent back there. So we've got our apple and garlic. We've got our sage. Next, I've got two eggs here that I'm gonna put in a little dish. And I've got 32 ounces of chicken broth, which is four cups. We're gonna add about two cups to the eggs here. We're gonna end up putting almost this whole quart in, possibly the whole quart, so you don't have to measure precisely. Just put about half of that in here and mix up these eggs. That's just gonna make incorporating them a little easier later on. And let's go back to the stove. So we're back to our saute pan and our sausage and our onions 
and celery are cooking here. We've got about six to eight minutes until the onions and celery soften and become translucent. I'm just gonna season this with a few heavy pinches of kosher salt. Got some black pepper. And we're just gonna let this go until the vegetables are translucent. All right, so our sausage is fully cooked. Our celery and onions are starting to get translucent. They're nearly fully cooked. Now's the time we're gonna add our apple and our garlic. Just gonna add that right to the pot. If you notice that things are starting to stick and they're not, they're not wanting to scrape up from the bottom of your pan, you can add a couple little knobs of butter or you could add a few splashes of chicken stock to give yourself some moisture in there and help uh, get things up off the bottom of the pan. And we're just looking for these apples to soften and the garlic to get fragrant about two to three minutes more. So it's been a few minutes, the apples are starting to soften and the garlic is really fragrant. We can smell it. I'm gonna add that fresh sage cook it for one to two minutes more, and then we'll go back to the island and finish our dressing. All right, and we've got our cooked sausage mixture here. It smells deliciously savory and fragrant. It smells like Thanksgiving. All right, I'm gonna bring our bread cubes over here. At this point, you just want to incorporate the bread and the sausage together. Right, it's at this point you want to taste a little bit of all of it together in, in one bite to check your seasoning level, your salt and your pepper, make sure that it's well seasoned. Because uh, we're about to put some raw egg in there, so this is the moment we want to do that. This is pretty good. Now keep in mind that this is full of bread, the bread's going to absorb a lot, and we're adding some chicken stock. So I'm going to add a little bit more salt just to make sure that the flavor punches through. And now we've got those two egg yolks that we whipped with a few cups of the chicken stock. I know that this mixture is really hot, but the fact that we scrambled the eggs with the chicken stock, that's gonna prevent us from getting um, scrambled eggs in this. If we were just putting just the eggs in here, the heat from this would cook the eggs immediately. And now we're just gonna add the rest of that chicken stock. This is to help soften the bread. This will help all the flavors come together. Right now I'm just gonna press all of this down together and we're gonna leave this sit in this bowl for a few minutes just to cool off slightly and for the bread to absorb all that liquid that we just put in there. So we're just gonna press this down and we're gonna walk away from it for five or six minutes to let that moisture distribute through all of the bread. All right, our dressing mixture has been sitting for a few minutes and I'm just using my spoon to kind of stir and look in the bottom and make sure there's not a lot of um, sitting liquid in the bottom. And that's how you're gonna know that the bread has absorbed most of it there. You can see a little bit of it down there, but you just don't wanna see like a big pool of sitting liquid. So this bread has absorbed just about all it's going to. So I've got my casserole dish here with a bit of butter, about three tablespoons. And I'm just gonna take my hand here and spread this around. This is gonna help prevent it from uh, burning and sticking on the sides of my casserole dish make cleanup a lot easier. So we're going to take that dressing mixture and we're just going to spoon it in and we're just going to press this down in here. Make sure it's even across the top. Now I've got a sheet of aluminum foil. I'm going to take the dull side here and spray it with some cooking spray. And then we're going to cover our casserole dish with the foil. This is gonna bake in a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Then we're gonna remove the foil and bake it for an additional 10 minutes just to get a, la a little crispy layer on the top. Now we've got this beautiful browned crispy top and we are ready to dive in and see what it tastes like. Now we didn't make the whole Thanksgiving spread today so we've just gotta imagine it with our turkey and our ham and our cranberry sauce and all the other things that we love sweetness of the apple, the chew of the bread, the spice from the sausage. This is dressing. This is my dressing from my family that we use for years and years and years down here in the South. You might call it Yankee dressing, but whatever you call it, you should make it for your Thanksgiving table. So that's the Yankee dressing in a nutshell. It's very easy. There's a lot of steps, but they're all simple steps and you can do it too. And if you do make it, would you let us know about it in the comments and tag us in your pictures on Instagram at Our House of Plenty. We wanna cook along with you.
If you enjoyed this video, won't you like and subscribe to our channel and share it with a friend. The recipe for this dish and several others to help make your Thanksgiving a reality is linked in the description below. Thank you for joining us today at the House of Plenty. We hope to see you soon.